just wanted to go over briefly what we discussed about this uh, two jump exercise, learning to cue the front cross. We had to do it so quickly that I wasn't sure if we had enough time to focus on all the particular details and how to actually practice the different behaviors that you can get in this. The idea is that what we're going to do is cue the dog. We're going to do a couple of things from this exercise. One is that we learn to watch for the moment of takeoff. So it gives us a chance to learn where the takeoff point is for our dog. It also uh, will help the dog understand what our cues are for when we want them to jump in a collected fashion as opposed to an extension. Now some of you I know said, well, but look, my dog jumped long. Right, we're learning. The dog doesn't understand what the cues are to jump tight, and that's why we're going to do a kind of repetitive exercise so one, we can practice how to cue it, and to the dog, can learn how to read those cues. But in order for the dog to be able to read those cues, we have to be able to give them consistently and we have to know what those cues are. So the cue for collection to jump this jump tight is that I will come up to the jump. I'm not going to move past the jump. Some of you in the session were actually moving past the jump and trying to meet your dog over on this side. You never want to cross the plane of this jump if you want the dog to jump collected and come back tight. I'm also going to come up to this jump, and I'm going to stop. If I can come to a complete stop, that's even better. And remember, I'm going to come to the stop, I'm going to give a very dramatic cue so it looks different from my acceleration cue, which is leaning slightly forward and, and stepping longer with my strides. In order to cue deceleration, I need to run up to it, stop, if I can completely stop. If I'm a little bit behind and I can't get to a complete stop, I want to be slowing my stride and also rising up again to cue that collection mode, the stop there. So those would be the cues. Now, what I want to do is, remember, arm change occurs when I want the dog to turn. So I'm going to execute a front cross here, and I am going to go from my right arm to my left at the moment that the dog lifts off or is committed right there in the jump. And I'm going to move over on the other side now so that I don't turn my back. But my dog is going to come up to here. When I see lift off or about ready for lift off, I'm going to make the arm change. And then this is very important. I'm going to leave and try to get over to this jump in time so that I can stop and be stopped waiting for my dog to get to this point. Don't worry, your dog will come around. In fact, they'll come around even faster because they're chasing you now. Remember, chasing by line cross body line. They're gonna chase you and try to catch up with you here. So they're gonna come even faster. But the added benefit of you leaving at the moment you have commitment and making your arm change is that it gets you time to get up here so your dog can see those cues and, and uh, read them to make an adjustment and do the collection here. Don't worry if your dog is jumping long. As long as you're putting all the cues together and you continue to practice it, uh, your dog will start to learn to read those and you'll learn how to be better at those cues as well. Let's do a little demonstration now with my dog Kate. She did jump long on that one because I was still moving forward. So at the moment she was ready to lift off, she still saw me in forward motion. Even though I hadn't gone past that plane, she saw I was still in forward motion and she read that. But the other time she was really tight. And then finally I finished by showing her how it would look different if I moved on and I wanted her to jump in extension. And in those cases, I, in that case at the end, I ran on through. Good girl. Good girl.